before I am going to talk about the details of the CDCP course, I would like to introduce to you the EPI company. EPI has offices around the world and if you don't find an EPI office, you very likely find an EPI partner office and therefore we have a true global footprint. EPI is a data center expert company and we focus on design and facilities certification, operations certification and we focus on data center and IT professional training. A few awards and mentionings in industry publications, it is so to speak EPI's claim for fame. EPI has an extensive data center training portfolio, which we can see on this particular slide. On the left hand side, we see the design and build track. In the middle, governance and operations. And on the right hand side, the focus on standards and compliance. Zooming in to the design and build track, it starts with the two day course CDCP and candidates who pass the exam are entitled to further advance their knowledge signing up for the CDCS course. The CDCS course is a three day course where we are talking a lot of topics similar to CDCP but on a more advanced level. For those who pass the CDCS exam and would like to get involved in understanding how to implement data center design and build projects, for them we have the CDCE course, which is a five day course. All right, let's take a look at the CDCP sneak peek. Certified data center professional, it is a two day course. And of course we have an agenda for the course which we can see right here. We start talking first about the importance of the data center, looking at the mission critical site, after which we go into the standards. Once that is completed, we make things more practical by looking at the data center location, the building and its construction. After that, we will take you into the computer room by having a look at the raised floor and the suspended ceiling and also we will be taking a look at the lights. The afternoon session is reserved for power including electromagnetic field radiation which is directly related to power infrastructure since it all relates to current consumption. On day two we kick off with equipment racks followed by the cooling infrastructure then we have a small talk about water supply, followed by scalable network infrastructures. The afternoon session reserved for fire protection, physical security and safety, auxiliary systems, read monitoring systems, and we close out with operational considerations. Then for the candidates, there is the CDCP exam, which is 40 questions in total. And those candidates scoring 27 or more correct have passed the exam and will be granted the CDCP certificate. In our first chapter, we are looking at the importance of the mission critical site, and that includes a number of risk factors that we commonly identify. These risk factors, or rather to say threats, may come from several areas, such as natural origin, human origin, and data network origin. We need to carefully understand these threats, so to make sure that if these threats do occur, we can mitigate the impact for our organization. In chapter two, we are talking about standards and one of the leading standards in the industry is the ANSI TIA 942. This standard is discussing so-called rated levels and with every number going up, it is believed that we have a higher expected availability. So rated one from being very basic until rated four being a data center which is considered fault tolerant. In the module three, we are going to look into site selection and the building aspects. And if the building is existing, then of course we need to identify if there are any showstoppers for us to potentially purchase the building or rent floor space in that same building. 
Also, we therefore need to carefully study the history of the building since there may have been incidents in the past which will affect the way we are going to operate our data center in the future. We need to understand the building codes as to learn what can be done while operating in the building. For example, if you are renting floor space in the building, very likely you cannot bring your own power generator. So in the case of a utility grid failure, the standby generator that you rely upon is under control of the building management. Other aspects need to be looked into as well, such as the level floor within the building, how much space do you require, including redundancy, security, floor loading and so on. In the same module, we are also discussing every individual room that you are using to support your computer room. So we are talking UPS room, battery room, media room and so on and so on. While talking raised floor and suspended ceiling, focusing on the raised floor itself, we are dealing with load factors. There are three load factors commonly known, uniformly distributed load, rolling load, and on this particular slide, we have an example for the concentrated load. So we carefully need to understand what is the type of load that goes into the computer room so that if we are going to build a raised floor, we are going to select the correct floor tile for making sure that we can sustain the load. This and plenty more in the raised floor and the suspended ceiling chapter. In module five, we are talking lights and that means we are talking the regular lights and also the emergency lights. And on this particular slide, we are looking at the regular lights that you are using on a day-to-day -day basis. The lights that you switch on when people are going into any type of room in the data center facility. Of course, in the computer room, we must make sure that light is located at regular intervals. That means that we need to make sure that the lights are installed in between the rack rows so that we have ample light available for people to work safe in a secure environment. Lights are typically connected to the raw power supply. They are known as a power disturbance factor. And when the utility power trips, we fall back on the standby generator and that is what will feed the lights. So when the lights go out in the building, you will see a short flicker and once the standby generator comes online, the lights will come back online as well. In the power chapter, we are discussing many, many, many items. We are going to look at where is power coming from? How do we route power in the data center? What to look out for in terms of how to achieve high availability? And also we are talking about certain power components, such as the batteries and the standby generator but also the UPS systems. And on this particular slide, we are looking at the one and only UPS for mission critical environments, which is the true online double conversion known as a VFI category. EMF, electromagnetic field radiation, is potentially a huge concern for the data center facility. So in the EMF module, we are going to talk about where exactly is EMF coming from? How can you recognize it? How can you measure it? And if it is becoming a concern, what can you do about it? In this particular slide, we are looking at the measurement of an EMF analysis, so to identify the areas of concerns and then to discuss how can we respond to this particular situation. While looking at equipment racks, you have plenty of these in your computer room and they are of course housing your IT server systems and your network equipment. Of course, optimally, we are looking at mesh door based racks so that we can pull our IT equipment such that it will not get any issues with heat loads. Apart from the mesh door racks, we still see the perforated grated door racks and in some computer rooms, even the glass door racks are being deployed. In the cooling chapter, we are talking about the concepts of cooling. So we look into air conditioner equipment, we look into raised floor cooling, non-raised floor cooling, and we also look into what becomes more and more popular, owl containment. 
It is possible to do hot owl containment and it is also possible to do cold owl containment. There is no such thing as the best and containment is the principle whereby one creates a compartmentalized area to contain either the hot air, the cold air or perhaps both. And containment can be done with or without a raised floor. So in the cooling chapter, we are going to discuss the cold owl containment benefits and possible drawbacks and we do similar for the hot owl containment. Water needs to be present in the data center and without having access to water you may end up in a denial for you to operate. So we need water primarily and alternatively we may be looking into backup water supply as well. In the network cabling infrastructure chapter we will be looking at the importance of network cabling. So we are looking into copper cables, we are looking into fiber optics and we also make clear that if you want to run a high availability data center you better understand how redundancy can be built at the same time. On this particular slide we see a quick overview of the TIA 942 network cable rating levels so for you to quickly understand what do you need to do from a network point of view depending on the rating level that you try to achieve. In the fire safety chapter, we are talking where is a fire coming from? How can we detect it? And subsequently, how can we make sure that we are doing a suppression? Suppression can be done using a gas-based system or a water-based system, but primarily we are trying to use a gas-based system. There are many gases or agents available and this is just one of the many examples that we are discussing in this particular module. This is energen, which is a high pressure gas and therefore we need to make sure that pressure relief dampers are installed to control the pressure in the room. Zoning can be done using energen and typically the property of energen is that the cylinders can be installed further away from the computer room. Of course, a data center is processing data and therefore security needs to be in place. Since a data center facility is very much a physical setup, the focus very much is on physical security considerations for which we see an example on this particular slide. In the respective module, we are not only discussing physical security, we are also discussing physical safety considerations. In the monitoring module, we are talking about the importance of monitoring so that already during your design and build, you start preparing for what do we believe we want to monitor in the future once the data center is ready for operations so that we can carefully identify the components that we are going to monitor and also how are we going to monitor these components carefully selecting monitoring systems which could be an EMS or a BMS or perhaps a DCIM system. What you want to monitor eventually is entirely up to you and it also sometimes depends a bit on the type of data center that you are operating. Is it enterprise? Are you working in a colo environment? What are the budgets available? And so on. In the final module, we are closing out with data center operations, where we talk high level considerations for you to understand that once you go live, you start the longest part of the data center life cycle. So where design and build typically takes, let's say two to three years, you may operate a data center easily for 10, 15 or even 20 years to come. So we close out with high level considerations, talking service level management. We discuss a bit on the vendors. We look into documentation. How do you operate security? How do you operate safety? And also we will touch up on floor management in regard to equipment installation. Of course, this one particular module in the CDCP course does not do sufficient justice to data center operations and therefore we have additional courses that do discuss data center operations 
respectively known as CDFOM and CDFOS. All right, so far for the CDCP sneak peek. I hope this has given you some insights in this two-day course and therefore we are looking forward to see you in our next class anytime soon. My name is Jan and on behalf of EPI I would like to thank you for watching. If you would like to know more information you can visit our website at epi-ap.com and if you want to speak to us directly you can do so by sending an email to sales at epi-ap.com.